Welcome into another episode of Clipboard Conversations. I'm John Fokey alongside Hornets assistant coach Jay Triano. Coming up, we're going to talk about the trends that this team is on, and we'll also take a look at what's up next as the Hornets continue this four-game homestand. And coach, uh, defense has been the trend. It's been a positive trend. You look at the defensive rating over the last eight games, uh, and it's at 104. What is behind what you're seeing on the on the defensive end for this team? Well, I think you know a little bit of it has to do with the roster change. Uh, mm -hmm for sure but also you know just getting more comfortable with our coverages and stuff that we have practiced and we've got a very young team so they haven't had a lot of reps at it but uh, now now we're doing it and we're communicating a little bit better and we're aggressive with our defense we, you know we're trying to put a lot of pressure on the offense and uh, I think our guys have done a great job of uh, of competing basically you know you compete at every uh, every time down the floor, and you know we've been able to switch. You know Cody and Caleb Martin and and, and Jalen McDaniel's being in the lineup gives us you know guys that are six foot seven and can switch and guard multiple positions. And you know the key is keeping guys out of the paint and mm -hmm. challenging shots from the perimeter. And uh, those guys allow us to be able to do that. Well, and the numbers in those two areas over the last eight games, you're holding opponents under 30 percent shooting from three and under 10 made threes per game. And then when you look at defending the paint, that, that number, it's not down drastically, but you're keeping them out of the paint at yeah. least, you know, four to five points a night. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of it has to do with our, our ability to contain. Mm -hmm. And I, our guys are doing a, a good job. And, you know, like I said before, when you switch, you're able to contain a little bit better. But we're also able to stay with our guys and get up. And I just like the, the overall aggressiveness of it. You know, when we switch, we're not going, you know, you know they're not like slide vertical slides or horizontal slides. They're they're, they're up into the defender and make mm -hmm. them change uh, and take away their momentum of, of of movement. We've talked to some of the guys and and uh, Coach JB as well about switching kind of promotes communication. Are you seeing that out there? Absolutely. Yeah, I think you know even trying to run offense against teams that switch, you try to come up with ways to get in and out of screens quicker and, and, and that. But if you know you know you're playing a good team when you hear them. When you know when you hear the communication and uh, they're letting the other defender know that the switch is going to happen, so that they can, you know, kind of get into the ball a little bit, maybe give a little hand-on push to mm -hmm. to force the switch. And uh, I think our guys are just like we, we drill it, we practice it, and we have from the beginning of the year, and I think we're just getting better at it. Coaches always talk about they want uh, the team, the opposing team's offense, to kind of feel the defense. For sure. How how has how, I guess how has that manifested itself over the last eight games for you guys? Well, I think you know it, it, I think that's a term, but it's also a, a physical thing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a guy gets a catch. You know, touch your man, touch the ball, and, and nobody likes to be touched. And, <laughs> and you know, so if you can put a hand on a hip and you get the guy to turn his shoulder a little bit, you eliminate half the floor. So. Um, you know, just being physical that way. And, and then, you know, in switching, you know, guys are going to switch switch out. They're going to try to slip and get out of the screens quicker. So, you know, a quick hand on the hip, a physical hand on the hip, and pushing him a bit will not allow him to be able to change that direction. So, you know, you say, you know, we want the defense to feel us. Well, those, those are actual physical ways, mm -hmm. um, but there's other ways. I mean, you, you communicate and being in front of guys all the time, uh, they feel you. And, uh, you know, I think the other thing that's kind of set the tone for us a lot over the last little bit is we've been able to pick up full court. And, uh, you know, when we're playing more guys and younger guys, and they, these guys have a ton of energy, and you can pick up full court, and it kind of sets the tone. We had a possession last night where, you know, they made their first pass of the offense and uh, 12 seconds were left on the shot. Mm -hmm. And we end up playing defense for 12 seconds solid after that. And they get a shot clock violation. Well, they didn't make their first pass, you know, until we were 12 seconds in. So that's, that, that's when they, you know, the defense is feeling you. You don't let them come down the floor at their pace, at their speed. And we want to try to dictate that tempo. And uh, you brought up the shot clock. I think that's such a huge thing. Fans maybe see a little bit of pressure in the backcourt, but they break it, and you think, well, that's no big deal. But to your point, all yeah. of a sudden, those are a couple extra seconds that are gone. Absolutely. And you know, it limits the number of times you can change sides of the floor, it eliminates their number of opportunities that they will have a, a catch and a snap drive to get into the paint. So. Uh, yeah, the pressure up the court, you're right, uh, even though it's not a turnover, it, it, it kind of dictates what's going to happen for the next, you know, 12, 14 seconds uh, when you only have to play that many in the half court. What's it been like for this coaching staff to talk about defense from early September, you know, continue drilling it through the season, and now to start seeing uh, some of the things that you've worked on so much kind of become a part of the guy's DNA and almost like second nature to the guys? Well, I think it's like everything with this team, though. You know, we, we're seeing growth. And, 
and, and it's happening at the defensive end right now. And you know we've been we've been on defense from the beginning of the year. But I think again, uh, the more times we drill it, the more times our guy can apply it in games, uh, the better and more comfortable they're going to feel about it. And I think you know we're starting to understand each other a little bit. We know a guy and. Uh, um, what what he what he's capable of doing, mm -hmm. and if a guy's going to need some help, and I think we're starting to just, I think that's part of growth is that you understand the person in front of you initially, but now you're starting to see wider. I understand not only the person in front of me, but I understand the person in front of you, and I can mm -hmm. I can maybe shift a little bit more if I know I'm, I, I that you need some help, and I think our guys are becoming more familiar with each other, the NBA game and the speed of the NBA game, and the fact that, that we've got a little bit of confidence now that we can disrupt teams. Well, the defense certainly has been a big positive trend for this. Hornets team. Another thing that's been a, a positive trend really all season is success in clutch time games and, and the NBA defines clutch as a game within five within the final five minutes and I just looked it up 30 of your 60 games have gone to clutch time so half your games end up in those close situations. What uh, how does that prepare this group for uh, down the line next season or in a month or so yeah. just being in all those close games? Well, I think, you know, the experience of games in, in crowds, at home, on the road, uh, where, you know, execution is paramount, uh, you know, at that point, part mm -hmm. of the game. And, uh, uh, you know, we can drill upstairs in the practice court, you know, how we, how we want to get the ball in versus pressure and what plays we want to run versus pressure. But, you know, those are against our guys there's no mm -hmm. crowd up there and it doesn't matter if you throw it away and I think you know when you get to do it in a in a gym and uh, places screaming they're cheering against you a lot of times we're on the road and you know there's nothing that prepares you better than the actual event mm -hmm. and uh, our guys I think you know there's there's a toughness about them and and, and uh, you know JB always talks about resiliency and uh, I think that's the one thing with this team we you know we're resilient we bounce back we'll bounce back we had a a bad game against Indiana, we bounced back, and, and it, there's a lot of pride in that locker room as well, from the staff right through the players. And uh, uh, I think that all manifests itself, and it get, get down to the final two minutes. They want to do it. We want to do it. We, we want to be successful. And you've got the number three offense. You lead the NBA in effective field goal percentage in clutch time, in clutch second time. in yeah. true shooting percentage. I mean, all of a sudden you get to those final five minutes, and that yeah. offense is is really found a, a group. Yeah, it's too bad the whole 48 minutes was not clutch time, right? Like, <laughs> well, we need to start it, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, it's it, it's um. You know, I think we, we, have, we have guys that are pretty dynamic, too, like uh, young guys who are, are not afraid of the moment right now. Uh, I think Terry and Devontae have been great. Uh, we've asked them, well, usually the stuff that we run is for them. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know, Miles will step back and hit a shot, and uh, none of our guys are afraid of the moment right now. And uh, I think that's a, that's a big, big thing to have uh, when you're young and when you're growing through this league. And just to kind of wrap up the conversation about clutch time, in Toronto, you brought up Terry and Devontae. Uh, mm -hmm. Both those guys hit very clutch free throws. I yeah. uh, had to wait at the free throw line for a little bit. The crowd mm -hmm. was on him. He got the defending champs. I mean, what a what a great moment for those yeah. guys in, in their young careers. Absolutely. And I think it was a little bit earlier, they had hit a three to take a lead. Then Miles came down and hit one as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're right. We have three of our, our, our better guys offensively out there uh, and making big big time shots in a, in a great environment. I mean, we had a couple of players come up and say, you know, this environment here is great. And it was. It was a great basketball environment. It was loud the whole time. And they were defend, they are defending champs. And, uh, you know, we, we, again, I talked earlier about the resiliency. We kind of just stayed with it. I mean, we had a lead and they took it away. And, you know, a lot of the young teams fold in that, in, in that environment. We came right back and hit a couple threes and we're right back in it and uh, able to get the win. So it was a big win for us. Uh, emotionally and, and for our confidence. And finally, I think you brought it up, but kind of dealing with the waves of, of the game. Earlier in the season, we saw build a lead, they go on a run, all of a sudden it's like a 21 to three run, and now yeah. you've got to dig your way out. These last couple of games, opponents have gone on runs and you've been able to stem it a little bit and, and keep yourself out in front. Yeah, I think a, a lot of it has to do with right now, um, and we have to figure out how to keep manufacturing this, but the energy off the bench changes for us. I mean, mm -hmm. when we go to the bench right now, uh, whether the guys have 
got to build a lead or, or, or falter a little bit. Uh, it seems like the, the dynamics of the game change uh, because of, of who and our personnel right now. So um, they're young guys. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to turn it over. They're going to miss shots. But at the same time, uh, the juice that they bring kind of gets, uh, gets going through everybody. And uh, we just keep telling those guys to keep going in, play with that same juice. And uh, it translates through the rest of the team. It sure has. Been a lot of fun over the last week watching this team grow in clutch time and on the defensive end. we got plenty more of it coming up at Spectrum Center. We'll talk about that next right here on Clipboard Conversations. Final segment here on Clipboard Conversations. Coach, we always take a look at what's up next for this team. And what's up next is not getting on an airplane. First time in a while that you're going to have an extended stretch here at Spectrum yeah. Center. How nice is it to, to be home, to have the practice time, and, and to be in front of your fans? No, it's great. It's nice to be home. And uh, uh, I think the, the big thing is the practice time. Because mm -hmm. you know a lot of times the travel eliminates your, your ability to practice or to be in your own gymnasium for the comfort of your own practices where you know and can control everything. So, um, you know, I thought today was a great spirited practice for, uh, you know, a day after a game, which uh, I guess for the rest of the month, it's always going to be the day after a game <laughs> when we practice. I mean, this is the craziest part of the schedule I've ever been involved with. But uh, hopefully it allows us to get into a great routine where mm -hmm. we, you know, we practice and get ready and play and then do the same thing the next day uh, throughout the month with a game every other day. So. Um, it's nice to be home and, and you know the only thing that you look at uh, that's a negative is the teams that are coming in here are pretty darn good. Uh, so um, you know we're gonna it's gonna be a great challenge for us. I mean we got we got some of the best teams in the NBA but that being said we just played the two best teams in the Eastern Conference and we're very competitive so uh, we're looking forward to uh, extending this long streak of challenging games. Yeah I mean this week San Antonio you got Denver you got Houston coming up uh, nice to be able to kind of stack up and see, hey, how do we match up against yeah. these teams? Especially when you think back to, it was a month ago, you saw a lot of these teams. How right. have we grown in a month? Well, I think, number one, our, our personnel is a little bit different, you mm -hmm. know, just because of uh, the moves that have been made. And uh, uh, I think, you know, the experience that those guys are getting playing, um, I, I just think, you know, we're, we're more uh, in tune with it, like, with each other, mm -hmm. uh, we, we're starting to figure each other out. I mean, I think Cody and Kale, you know, last night connecting on that uh, alley oop was yeah. kind of like a thing that you see veteran players who have played with each other for a long time do. And of course, those guys have played together for a long time. So, uh, you know, I think the more we play together, the more we understand each other. And I think the same goes for the coaching staff. We understand mm -hmm. who we have and, and what guys are going to bring us, and we're understanding how to put our players in in more positive uh, positions for them. And Coach JB has sort of shortened the bench a little bit, mm -hmm. to your point. Um, does it feel like uh, he has kind of a good rhythm, just a, like a good substitution rhythm, and the guys understand it too, that, okay, especially like Terry and Devante, I'm going to play up to this point, then I come out, yeah. Terry comes back in, that kind of a rhythm? Yeah, I think, I think it goes both ways. I think, you know, JB feels comfortable with it, but I also think our players now are knowing and expecting when they're going to get into a game. So whether they're on the bench or on the floor, they know, i, I got another minute, I can go hard here, I can push myself through this. Or if they're on the bench going, I'm going to be in there in a minute and get mentally focused for it. So uh, I think we're all kind of, you know, like the way we're, we're playing right now and like, like the space that we're in. So we're kind of in a good rhythm and why, why disrupt it? All right, let's see if we can keep it going. Three home games this week. Get your tickets at Hornets.com. Hornets assistant coach Jay Triano, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, this has been this week's episode of Clipboard Conversations. Thank you.